Hello my friend, welcome in the video course C++. This course is divided into over 50 lessons and it's over 12 hours long and it's recommended for beginners. After this course you will become expert in the C++ language. Hello everybody, welcome to the first lesson. In the upcoming videos I will teach you the C++ language. I will try to cover all the subjects about the C++ from the beginner to the expert level. After you watch all my videos, you should be able to create your own programs. Before we start this cool adventure with the programming, I want to explain you what the programming is. First, let's focus on the word language. What is language? Have you ever told about it? Well, let's make a comparison. Right now, I am talking to you and I am using what? English language, right? So we are using some kind of code to communicate with each other, right? And that code, that thing is called language. We understand each other only, only because we both know that code. Code in our situation is made of words and each of that word have got some kind of meaning which we all understand. That's why we are able to communicate with each other, right? But there is a problem with computers. When we look at our PC, which stands for personal computer, we can say to him something like, for example, hello PC, bring me some beer. And well, if computer understood it, and probably if our computer had something that would allow him to move, then he would bring it, right? <laughs> okay, but there is a small problem. It doesn't understand it, and as you can see, I'm not drinking anything right now, right? <laughs> so we need to talk to a computer with the language that he can understand. So what is that language? This language is called a programming language language. Programming means creating understandable instructions, orders, that will be followed by our computers, okay? If that instruction must be understandable, we need to talk in the language that our PC is talking in, right? So the language that our computer know is created of numbers, 0101011100. And why is it zero and ones? Well, that subject is connected with electricity. Our computer can read only two pulses, zero and one. And every message, every word, every instruction that is sent to our computer uses different sets of the zero and ones, okay? And as you might have already noticed, it would be probably hard for us to use that language, right? Can you imagine writing a code using zero and ones? It would be hard for us to use that language. And for sure, it would take lots of time to create anything. Because of that, people created something between computer's language and between our language that we use every day. And well, to be honest, they have been creating many languages like that. But we'll focus on the C++ language in this course. And now, using the C++ language, we could write, for example, something like that. Get characters, two parentheses, and a semicolon. And what could it mean to our computer? It means that, well, get characters from some kind of input. But as you can see, it is still not working, right? Why is that so? Because it is not a language that our computer uses. It is not a sequence of zeros and ones, right? So we need something that will translate C++ language into that 10001, okay? And that thing is called a compiler, okay? Compiler. So we've just learned a new word. The process of translating languages, languages is called compilation and we use for it a program that is called a compiler. So when you compile a program using a 
compiler, you are doing many things. Like, for example, checking the syntax of our language. So it's checking if we hadn't made any mistakes. It's linking libraries. It's optimizing our program and many, many other things. But I don't want to go into these details right now. Let's rather focus on the things that really, really matters right now. We need a compiler. To start our adventure with programming, we also need an editor that will help us write programs in the C++ language, right? Do you want to write programs in the web browser your whole life? <laughs> it would be also great if that editor had many additional features that would help us writing programs. Like for example, showing us instantly where the error is or colorizing our program so it would be easier to read. And that editor with all that features and a connected to it compiler is called like that, IDE. And IDE is the short for Integrated Development Environment, okay? So IDE is kind of like a set of programs that will help us writing new programs. And after compiling that programs, we can run them on our PC, finally. <laughs> so let's download IDE. We will download something, what is called code blocks. It is a free one. It is good for beginners, so we will be using it. You can use any other IDE, but keep in mind, there might be small differences, but do not worry, they are pretty small and you will surely be able to manage them. Okay, so it's time to download the code blocks. Let's go into the downloads tab. Let's choose the download the binary release link. And here we should choose now this link, okay? It's very important to not to choose these links here above. Why? Because they do not have the compiler pre-installed, okay? You will have to install it manually, it's uh, hard, and that's just at least, uh, we are beginners right now, and let's focus on using the pre-installed version, okay? We do not need to focus on installing different compilers because there are many compilers. Let's choose this setup, okay? min gw setup setup.exe. But of course, if you are using some kind of other operating system like Linux, then you have got here versions. And if you are using Mac, here you have the code blocks for Mac. Okay, but we are using Windows, at least me, <laughs> and let's choose the sourceforge.net. And now let's click on the direct link and now let's download it. Okay, so the download process has been finished. Let's click here and let's install the code blocks. Let's click next. And of course, read the license agreement carefully and let's click I agree. Here it's very important that you have got this thing checked, min GW compiler suit, okay? Well, we can just install the default things, all the default things, it doesn't matter, it's small anyway. Let's click next. Let's click install and let's wait a second. Okay, and now we are being asked, do you want to run the code blocks now? Yes, uh, tag means yes in Polish, sorry. I don't know why it didn't get translated. And now when we open it, as you can see, we've just opened our IDE. I need to make it a bit smaller, okay, because I do not record my entire screen. And uh, we have got now here the ID, Integrated Development Environment. And in this environment, we can develop using integrated tools our own programs, right? We can develop our own programs, that's cool. And how to do it? Well, we need to first create a file. So let's go here, file, new, oops, file, new, empty file. And now we can write here a code. I will write it now as fast as possible so you won't lose your precious time. I will explain all that code later, okay? Very simple program right now so we can just check if it's working. So let's include the library. Let's say that we are using the proper namespace and now we have to use the main function and let's send something to the output so we can see something like let's welcome people, for example, hello world, like that, okay? And now we need to save the file. In order to save the file, I can go here, file, and here, save file, or use the shortcut, control plus S. I'm using the shortcut, and now it's very, very, very important. Here, I have got the name of my file. And it's very important to not save by default 
this as a C language, okay? Because we are not programming in the C language, we are programming the C++ language. If you by mistake, do not add here C++, you have to manual type here, remember about it, I'm telling it five times because people make mistakes here most time. And when you type the C++ here, you are making sure you will compile this program as a C++ program, okay? Let's save, Zapish means save, buff, let's save it. Well, we could, you know, call it a bit better, not untitled one, like, you know, first program. <laughs> let's save it. And as you can see, now we have got our code colorized and we can run it, okay? We can run it using the build and run option here. Here, it means that it's gonna build and then run the program. So it means it's gonna compile it because the compiler is hidden behind this button right now. Bah! And as you can see here, we have got hello world and some kind of additional message that is added by our compiler, okay? But hey, we just compiled our first program. We can write it, right? Of course, we, I will explain everything that you see here better in future. Do not worry for it. Now, I just want to show you in this lecture how to compile things, how they work, okay? Normally, if you are using either ID, you might have to stop your program manually. Remember to add then at the end instruction like that. System, pause, and you have to probably, not always, include a library here that is called like that, okay? Just do it and this will work. If you cannot use the system, you might need to add something like that, get character, uh, and also this program will stop. Sometimes you need to also add here int and here return zero, okay? We do not need to add it. Here we will not confuse, I, I, so I will not confuse you anymore, okay? So let's just focus that this is the simplest program, the most simple program ever possible to create. I will explain every instruction very, very profoundly, very deeply, right, in the next lesson, so do not worry. Uh, right now, I would also uh, like to focus on, um, you know, looking at one very important feature in this IDE. Earlier, I said something about the compiler, right, and this compiler is hidden here, and it translates C++ language into the 0111, right, so into the computer language. And it also means that if I make any mistakes, like for example that, well, <laughs> this word, I don't know what does it mean, and well, it doesn't it exist in my language, it doesn't exist in the C++ language, right? So it will be probably hard to translate it. When I click here, as you can see, our program did not run, we have got an error. And the cool thing about this ID is that when I click here, I will be instantly uh, shown where this error is and I also, I can read here uh, the error message. That wor word word was not declared in this scope, in this uh, in this place, right? Um, what the hell is this? It is just I don't know how to react on this. You have to just delete it and then run again the program, and it's gonna wor wor work, right? So as you can see, everything is working now. I'm inviting you to watch my other lectures. If you have any question, as always, feel free to ask.